Hello, Chem 161 students. Today, we're going to be doing the sublimation experiment. Um, to, we're going to see a compound in this, in this case, ammonium chloride, sublime from a uh, solid to a gas. Um, and so let's go over our general materials uh, before we start the experiment. Uh, we have a Petri dish or one side of it, a, uh, a ring clamp, a porcelain evaporating dish, ammonium chloride, a uh, Bunsen burner, which I'm gonna show you how to use in just a second, a balance, a um, triangle wire that I already pre-burnt, um, a funnel, and a ring stand back here. You can't really see the top of the stand, but this is a ring stand right here, but we'll see it later. But first I wanna uh, show you how to use a Bunsen burner. So I'm gonna quickly move these things out of the way and show you how to use a Bunsen burner. So this is the Bunsen burner here. This Bunsen burner, as you can see, is connected to, let me open this hood a little bit, a gas line up there. Uh, the gas line is controlled by that blue knob over there, but you can also uh, you can also control the amount of gas that uh, is put into the Bunsen burner. So if I was to turn this blue gas knob up here, which you can't see, uh, gas should start coming out. Now there's two functions on the Bunsen burner. So as you can see here, there's a knob back down here where you can control the amount of gas that comes into the Bunsen burner. Um, and so if you turn this, it can increase or decrease the flame. Here, we'll increase the amount of oxygen that is um, uh, introduced to the Bunsen burner. Now, uh, oxygen uh, is food for fire, right? So the more oxygen the fire has, basically the hotter or uh, the fire gets. So we'll start it off with starting this guy up. And so here we have a striker. This thing causes flint, is, has a flint uh, attached to it and causes sparks. So if I turn this on, introduce some gas on the bottom here and I use this flint, the Bunsen burner starts, right? And so let's start this off with an orange flame. So I'm gonna turn off the lights for this portion just so you can kind of see it a little better. It's kind of spazzing, but we're gonna to have to deal with it, right? Uh, so here on the bottom here, if I twist the bottom, uh, you can put more gas or less gas. So as you can see, there's a bigger fire. And as, as I twist this down, the fire decreases. And so, Let's, let's keep it at that for right now. And so if I change the amount of oxygen put into it, it goes from an orange flame to a more blue flame. Now blue is a hotter flame. Uh, and so we can increase that or decrease that. And so we have a blue flame here. So blue is hotter. Um, and so we're gonna use this type of flame for this experiment. So uh, I'm gonna shut this off for now. I'm gonna shut this fire off for right now, turn back on the light. And then we're gonna set up our apparatus. So sorry for the uh, sudden change in um, lighting, but we need to set up this apparatus. So for this apparatus, we'll have the Bunsen burner on the bottom. We'll have the ring clamp, excuse me, real quick. Right over here. Right above it, it says about 10 inches from the, the Bunsen burner. I usually like to say like a hand and a half. So maybe about there is good. Uh, we'll put our triangle wire, our evaporating dish. Uh, we'll have a uh, funnel right on top, right? Oops, sorry. Right on top of here to catch ammonium chloride when it's sublimed. We're not gonna put it out because it's gonna fall and break. Uh, I will be adding a clamp to it to kind of hold it in place. So as you can see, I'm going to add a clamp that I didn't initially mention. So I can hold the funnel in place and it'll keep it from falling down later on. Okay. 
So anyways, that is our apparatus. That is our setup with our Bunsen burner on the bottom up to the evaporating dish on the top. Uh, the evaporating dish is gonna hold our ammonium chloride for this experiment. So let's start off with um, the procedure of the experiment. So the first thing they want us to do is to measure the mass of half the Petri dish. So I'll push this to the back, bring our balance to the front really quickly. Make it so you guys can see it. Yes, crap. Back. And so they want us to measure half of our Petri dish. Let me reset that real quick. Okay, so I reset that. So let's uh, take the mass of half Petri dish. So that looks like it's 41.479 grams. So I'm gonna write that in the first line of our lab manual, 49.479 grams. So in the first line up there, not down here, 49.479 grams. Then they want us to measure the mass of the Petri dish, half and a clean funnel. So we'll put that up there and our clean funnel, we'll weigh that together. That comes out to, 99.681 grams for that. Uh, then they want us to measure mass of ammonium chloride. Now in the procedure, it says um, weigh out approximately half a gram of pure sodium chloride to the evaporating dish. So we'll take our evaporating dish that we put up here. We can throw that on the balance, uh, on the balance and we can tear it so we can zero it out. And then we can add about half a gram. So we will add half a gram. So we have ammonium chloride and we will add about half a gram. That's way too much. Take a little bit less out. A little bit more out. There we go. So we're just going to say that we have 0.515 grams of ammonium chloride uh, in this evaporating dish. So 0 0.515 grams. So before we start the experiment, we took all of our pre-data here. Uh, we measured the half dish, the half dish with a clean funnel and the mass of sodium chloride. Okay. And so before we even start the experiment, what I like to do and what makes it easier is I like to take these this ammonium chloride because it looks kind of clumpy right now, right? And I will take a uh, glass stir rod and I'll kind of press it down a little and spread it out just so a little less clumpy. It doesn't do a lot of, it doesn't do it a lot of justice, but it trust me, it helps a little bit more. So we'll take that and We'll add this to our apparatus in the back. Now, let's see if I can move this back a little bit so you can see the whole thing, hopefully. I'm gonna omit most of the Bunsen burner, but uh, we're gonna set up our apparatus now. Now, the dish, the uh, Petri dish is just to carry your funnel after the experiment is finished because the funnel will be hot. So I'll put our evaporating dish with ammonium chloride on there. And then I'll add in our funnel to catch the sublime uh, ammonium chloride. Uh, remember, I put that clamp there so that uh, it, it holds the funnel, right? So again, I am going to turn the gas on on the bottom of the Bunsen burner. You can't see it, but I'm turning on the gas. I'll take my flint, start the fire. Maybe add more gas and you're going to see it start to sublime. So I'm going to close the hood so it, the vision will be a little blurry, but that's so uh, we can see the fire go straight up instead of when uh, the, the vacuum on the top of the hood uh, distorting the flame. So I'll turn off the light for a second so you can see the fire 
or the flame is on the uh, evaporating dish. So if you look there, you can see, right? The flame is slowly on the evaporating dish and slowly heating up the um, ammonium chloride. Now, when it gets hot enough, it's going to sublime from a, it's going to turn to a solid it's going to go from a solid to a gas and it's going to sublime. So as you can see right now, the funnel is relatively clear, but in a second, you'll start seeing it get kind of cloudy. And I think you can see it right now. I don't know if I turn off the light, if it will look a little better. No, you can't see it at all, but you can see it kind of getting white on the bottom. Do I have something? to show you. Give me one second. I put kind of a, a different color background instead of white for this. And now as you can see, the funnel is, is fairly white. So that ammonium chloride that was on the bottom of the evaporating dish has now sublimed and is being caught into the funnel. Now, food disclosure, um, when I was setting this up, some of the uh, ammonium chloride escaped out of the side. Uh, so we're not probably gonna obtain all of it, but uh, you get the concept nonetheless. And so we'll continue the experiment. So I'm gonna let this sublime for a couple more minutes. I'm not gonna let make you guys watch or sit through it. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna come back when I think it's finished subliming. So I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, so I think I let it sublime enough. Uh, you don't want to let it go too long because then uh, the modem car will start burning. So I'm going to turn off the gas or the flame on the bottom. And I am going to carefully take that funnel off of the evaporating dish and put it onto my watch glass. And so carefully, I hope I don't drop it, I'm going to take that off. I'll put it on there. Now, you can see the smoke that's coming out of the side, right? So there is still some ammonium chloride that was still in there. But for the most part, we got most of it out. I don't see very much in there, right? So here we have our evaporating dish with our funnel with our sublime ammonium chloride. So let's just the side for a second. We'll bring the balance back into the screen. And we'll weigh it. So we'll weigh out. Sorry, I zeroed it out. Uh, and so once that is at zero, and out again. Okay, so we're gonna presume that's at zero. So we're gonna put this and we're gonna weigh it out. And we're gonna get our final mass to be, looks like 99 point, I'm gonna say 999 just for fun. So. In the last part, 99.999. So what we recovered was 99.999 minus 99.681 grams. Uh, and that's how much ammonium chloride we recovered. We can do a percent recovery by taking that difference and dividing by uh, the initial mass that we used and multiplying by 100% to determine the percent recovered. So. Uh, this is it for this part of the video. There's going to be a part B that you need to watch as well um, for this experiment. So I'll see you in that next video.